If you're actually good in algebra, this should be a very easy question to answer. So here is the problem. We have x squared plus 8x plus 15, and we're trying to determine the factors of this quadratic trinomial. All right, so which one of these answers is correct? So A is x plus 5 times x minus 3, B is x minus 5 times x plus 8, and C is x plus 5 times x plus 3. All right, now if you think you know the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct solution here in just one second. Then I'm going to show you an extremely easy way or method that you can use to factor these quadratic trinomials every single time and get them right. A lot of students uh, struggle with factoring, so you definitely want to kind of uh, stay with me for a few minutes and make sure you get this kind of nice shortcut. All right, but let's take a look at the answers. So the correct solution here is C, which of course is x plus 5 times x plus 3. All right, now if you got that right, you definitely get an A plus, a happy face, a 100%, and a certificate of excellence for your ability to factor simple quadratic trinomials. Now, if you can't factor, you're going to have a tough time passing algebra. So there is a lot involved in factoring, but uh, let's take a look at how we factor a simple quadratic trinomial like this. All right, now before I uh, explain this problem, let's just kind of talk about the word factoring. So if I have the number 10 and I told you to factor 10, what are we talking about here? Well, we want to break up 10 into its factors. So 2 times 5 are factors of 10, and 1 times 10 are also factors of 10. So when you have two numbers such that when you multiply them together and you get back to this number, these numbers are the factors of this number. All right, so what we want to do here is attempt to break up this trinomial into its factors. Now, a number like 10, we can factor as 2 and 5, right? So 2 times 5 is 10. But what if we have a number like 7? Well, you can factor 7 only this way, right? So 7 times 1 is 7. So 1 and 7 are factors of 7. But when you have a number and the only factors are 1 and that number, we call this type of number prime. Right, So sometimes you can have a prime uh, situation in algebra. So we really don't know if we can factor this thing. So what we want to do is try. Now in this situation, clearly we know that this can be factored because we only have three options to this question. And let's kind of uh, look at this problem. So if I said, hey, is 2 and 5 factors of 10? Well, how could you determine this? Well, you just multiply 2 times 5, and if you get to 10, well, that indicates that 2 and 5 are indeed factors of 10. So what we can do here is use multiplication to kind of verify which one of these are the factors. So let's take a look at our actual answer, which of course is C. And if you know how to multiply binomials in algebra, then you can kind of verify that this, in fact, is the correct answer. All right, now how do we multiply binomials? Well, I don't want to turn this into a full lesson, but basically you can use something called the FOIL technique. First, outer, inner, last. So what you're, what you're going to do is you're going to multiply those first terms, x times x, that's going to be x squared. Then you're going to multiply the outer terms, this is going to be x times 3, so that is going to be a plus 3x. Then you're going to multiply the inner terms. That's going to be 5 times x. So that'll be a plus 5x. And then lastly, we'll multiply the last terms. That's 5 times 3, which of course is 15. Now you can see here, when I add these like terms, I'm going to get x squared plus 8x plus 15, which of course is our quadratic trinomial. So this is one approach to answer this question. Now this is a lot of work, right? So you have to, have to multiply this, this, and this to figure out the right answer. But this is one approach to kind of verifying whether factors, whether you have something factored correctly. You can just simply multiply the factors. And if you get back to the problem, well, indeed, you kind of know that this is the correct answer. All right, but uh, let's talk about how we actually factor something like this in algebra. So to factor something like this, again, we need to understand what this means, right? So what we are attempting to do here is to take this big quadratic trinomial, and of course this has three terms. It's quadratic because it's a polynomial 
to a second power, right? Now, when you can factor a quadratic trinomial, what you're going to end up with is two binomials, okay? So we're going to end up with a binomial. Binomial is something like x plus 3. It's two things, right? We have a variable and a number, and that's what we're going to have here. Now, what's going to uh, be the case is that we have x squared, and we're going to end up with an x right here and an x right here. Now, I'm kind of going very quickly here uh, trying to explain this. Really, if you are struggling with uh, factoring, what you need to do is kind of start from the beginning, learn how to factor the greatest common factor, uh, more, uh, kind of simpler um, algebraic expressions, and then you get into quadratic trinomials. And if you need help with this stuff, uh, make sure to check out my algebra course. You can find a link to it in the description of this video. Also, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out. All right, so if we can factor this quadratic trinomial, we're going to look to this x squared, and we're going to end up we're going to end up with an x here and an x here, and then we're going to have some sort of number combination in the rest of these binomials. Now, of course, we don't know what they are, and that's what we need to figure out. All right, so let's take a look at this technique that I told you about, where it's very easy to factor a quadratic trinomial like this. All right, so here are two types of quadratic trinomials. Now, the first type is like the one we're dealing with in our problem. All right, so we have 1x squared plus 8x plus 15. This is our problem. Now, and I'm going to refer to this type of quadratic trinomial as a case 1. Now, we have a case 1, but we also have a case 2. And this is an example of a case 2 quadratic trinomial. Now, you might be saying to yourself, hey, Mr. U2 Math Man, this seems confusing. Well, it's not that confusing. The difference between a case 1 and case 2 is very easy. It's the leading coefficient. Now, notice we have our uh, polynomials here, our trinomials, written, from, uh, written in highest to lowest power. This is called standard form. So we have x squared plus 8x plus 15. Now, anytime you have a 1 in front of that x squared, it could be y squared, any variable that you know you have in your trinomial, if you have a 1 in front of that leading term, this is a case 1. In other words, we just have x squared plus 8x plus 15. We don't have a number other than 1 in front of that x squared. Now, if we did have a number other than 1 in front of our variable here, our leading term, this is a case 2 situation. So 3x squared plus 8x is a case 2. Now, I bring this up because what I'm going to show you is a super easy way to factor case 1 trinomials. Now, this uh, kind of shortcut method is um, not to be used on case 2. There is a different method that you can uh, use for case 2 trinomials as well. But what I'm going to show you here only applies to case 1 trinomials. All right, so let's take a look at this method right now. So here is how it works. So here is our case 1 trinomial. And our problem is what? 1x squared plus 8x plus 15. So what you're going to do is just get in the habit of multiplying that leading coefficient, which is 1, and you're going to multiply it by the last number, which is 15. Now, again, you want to make sure that your trinomial here is in standard form, highest to lowest power. So it's x squared, our x term, and then our number. So it's going to be 1 times this number. Now, I'm showing you this because you can use um, another kind of technique that's very much like this to factor case 2. So a uh, case 2 trinomial. So we're going to have 1 times 15. Now, of course, that is 15. Now, here is what we are going to try to do. So we're going to look at factors of 15. And we want to look at these factors in terms of this middle number right here, 8. All right, so we want to keep 8 in mind. And, but we need to look at the factors of 15. So let me explain to you what I'm talking about. All right, so what are all the factors of a positive 15? Well, 1 times 15 is a positive 15. Negative 1 times negative 15 is also a positive 15. 3 times 5 is also a positive 15. And negative 3 times negative 5 is also a positive 15. OK, so we did all this work for what? Well, I told you here that we want to be looking at this number 8. OK, but what we need to do is add up all these factors, these respective factors. So 1 and 15 is what? That's 16. Negative 1 and negative 15 is a negative 16. 
3 and 5, if we add these up, is a positive 8, and negative 3 plus a negative 5 is a negative 8. Now, this might seem like a lot of work, and a lot of you probably know how to easily factor a quadratic trinomial, but again, a lot of students struggle with this, and this technique here, when you practice, will be a lot easier than what I'm kind of showing you. But what you want to do is look at these factors, these combinations here, and look for the uh, uh, factors such that they add up to this number here, 8, right? So which pair of factors add up to 8? Well, 3 and 5 do. All right, so this is the numbers that we need to stick into our bi binomial, 3 and 5. Remember, we already know that we're going to end up with two binomials. We're going to have an x here and an x here. What we don't know is what is the rest of these binomials. Well, by doing all this work, the answer is 3 and 5. All right, so let's go ahead and just put this all together. So we're going to have x right here, but x plus what? Well, x plus 5 or x plus 3 doesn't make a difference. And then we're going to have an x right here, and we're going to have an x plus 3. So this is our answer. All right, now factoring is a critical skill. This may very well be the most critical skill in all of algebra. All right, so most students that struggle with algebra struggle with factoring. And of course, if you're doing great in algebra, that means that you are really good at factoring. So if you're having a tough time in algebra, you really need to ask yourself, are you having a tough time with factoring? And again, if you need help with this stuff, I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel. And of course, you can check out my algebra courses by following the links in the description. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.